Nine straight losses for the Detroit Pistons after they lose to the Trey young list Atlanta Hawks. This is unacceptable. We're going to talk about what needs to happen, man. What's going wrong? It's Stay tuned, man, for today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I am your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review. Whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on, that's another great way to support the podcast. The Detroit Pistons have come out here and have lost to the Atlanta Hawks, furthering their losing streak to nine games. The Atlanta Hawks did not have Trey Young. This has gotten it, it's spiraling, spiraling out of control. And with their Pistons' upcoming schedule, which features the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Toronto Raptors, the Denver Nuggets, the Indiana Pacers, the Washington Wizards, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Knicks, the Cavs again, the Pacers again, the Sixers again, the Sixers again, the Bucks, then the Hawks, the Jazz, the Nets, the Nets, Celtics, right? Like, we can keep going on and on. Where's the Pistons' next win coming from? Because if the Pistons can't beat a Trey Youngless Atlanta Hawks team, if the Pistons can't beat a Trailblazers team, if the Pistons can't beat some of the teams they've lost to over this streak, how are they going to beat any of those teams? How? How can you reasonably expect or reasonably believe the Detroit Pistons can beat any of these teams that I just named? So there is a very good chance, there is a very high chance that in a week and a half, this thing will be completely sunk. In a week and a half, this could be extremely bad. Now, I know in the last podcast, I said 11 games is still very early in the season. But my God, that doesn't mean you want to start off this way. I was, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was honestly expecting the Pistons to win this game tonight. I thought they were going to crack their losing streak. I thought they were going to win tonight. And they did not. And I, if they get to the week and a half from now, and the losing streak gets to like 16, 15, if like if that starts happening, yeah, something has to happen. So you can't have a losing streak reach that amount. It, it, like, you can't have it. Something's going to have to happen. In this game against the Hawks, the Pistons had numerous chances to win this game. Numerous chances. In the third quarter, the Pistons took the lead. They were playing really well. They had gotten the lead up to five. Midway through the third quarter. And then all of a sudden, the same thing that has killed the Pistons all season, the turnover started happening. Just turnover after turnover after turnover. And it let the Hawks back into the game. Or let me not say back into the game. It was only a five-point game. But it gave the lead back to the Hawks. It gave all momentum back to the Hawks. And the Hawks went and took it from the Detroit Pistons. The Pistons take the lead by one in the fourth quarter. They get the ball. What happens? Marvin Bagley, illegal moving screen, an immediate turnover. Hawks come back down the floor, score, take the lead, end up winning the game. It, not only is it the amount of turnovers, it's the, when the turnovers are happening, it's the most, it's the worst possible time for these turnovers to be happening. The worst possible time. I, I, I'm honestly at a loss of words right now. I'm at a loss of words. I want to hear from all of you guys. I know everyone's going to be very emotional and, and are going to have a lot of things to say about the Pistons so far. So I want to hear from everybody. Comment section down below or over on Twitter. But this is... You guys know. All throughout the offseason, I, I was saying that this season was not going to be as successful as fans thought. I didn't think this team was too great of a team. I didn't think this team would have a major win bump. Okay? I didn't think all those things would happen. I thought they'd be a little better, but obviously my point is I was a little bit lower on this team's immediate future this season than everybody else. 
But this, what I've watched so far, this is unacceptable. This is this is unacceptable, and it can't continue to happen. Things need to change. They need to do something. I think at twelve, I think twelve games is enough of a sample size to make some changes, change some rotations, change some lineups, do something. You have to do something because there's no reason that the Pistons should be on a nine-game losing streak. No reason they should have lost to the Trailblazers. They probably shouldn't have lost to the Pelicans. That game against the Warriors, they had it late. The Bucks, they shouldn't have lost that game. Sixers, they played it close until the third quarter. They started turning the ball over. The Bulls, they shouldn't have lost by 11. And these Hawks game, they shouldn't have lost this one. Everyone on this team, from Monty Williams to Kay Cunningham to Isaiah Stewart to Bagley to Killian Hayes to Jane Ivey to Marcus Sasser to Knox to Wiseman to, to, to Asar. Everybody on this team needs to go look in the mirror and figure out how they can be better. How do they can be better and crack this losing streak? Because not, the fan base is getting sick of it for good reason. The fan base is getting sick of it and they're getting loud. And no matter what anybody says... When the fan when the fan base is going to get as loud as I think they're got, about to get, when I think the fan base is going to be as loud as I think they're about to get, and as furious as they're about to get, don't listen to what anybody says. The players see it, they hear it, the coaches hear it, the GM hears it, and the most important thing, the owner hears it. Now, I'm not suggesting anything crazy is going to happen, but if this losing streak gets to about 15, 16, fans are going to be really loud. Fans are going to be really mad. And Tom Gores will hear it. And that sometimes when the, your owner starts to hear the fan base get angry and things are going bad, that's when some things start to happen. Not predicting that something will happen. I'm just saying that's when you start to see some, some stuff go down. So let's avoid that from happening and close some games out. Stop turning the ball over. Just stop. Stop turning the ball over. If the Pistons... Just cut their turnovers down by three. They win probably three games during this losing streak. It's 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 just straight up unacceptable. And the 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 the, the counter will be oh well you know with the, without Trey Young the Hawks still have Dejounte Murray and they still have a decent team. Well, F, the NBA in twenty twenty three there's not many just trash teams walking around. Everybody has at least some good players on the squad. So if you take the best player off the Hawks and the Pistons still can't beat them, if you take the Portland Trailblazers and the Pistons can't beat them without Scoot Henderson and everyone else they were missing, if the Pistons can't beat these teams, who are they going to be able to beat? And injuries cannot be an excuse for this. Injuries cannot be an excuse for this. They, ha- they Nine-game losing streak? And the, when you have situations when you're up, and you have chances to win, and you're fumbling it away over and over and over again, and now you're, once again, finding yourself at the bottom of the league? It, can't, it just can't happen. Can't happen. And, and the, the worst part about this, the worst part about the situation the Pistons have put themselves in is when they lose to the Cavs, you can't be mad that they lost to the Cavs. When they lose to the Nuggets, you can't be mad that they're going to lose to the Nuggets upcoming. When they lose to the Pacers, probably can't be mad about that. The Pacers are, are I believe, like fourth, in the, in the conference, third in the conference right now, playing really well. Probably can't be mad they lose to them. The Knicks, the Lakers, the Cavs again, the Pacers again, the 76ers, twice, then the Bucks. Like, you can't be mad when they lose to those teams. So the, the losing streak's probably going to extend to, like, 15. But the, the anger will rise, not because they're losing to these contending teams, because they couldn't handle their, their business through these nine games to avoid the massive losing streak that's probably upcoming. That's the problem. What they couldn't handle earlier on the losing streak is going to bite them bad for the rest, for the next two weeks probably. Next two and a half weeks. And they have no one to blame for themselves. No one's going to feel bad for them now that they lose to the Cavs, that they lose to the Bucks twice or the Sixers twice and the, and the Nuggets. Like if you, if you win three of these games during this nine game losing streak and you're sitting at like, what is it, five and five or five and six or something? Wherever the record would be. What are they, two and ten right now? So you add three wins. So they'd be like five and seven. If they're five and seven and then they go and lose to these teams, fan base won't get nearly as mad. No one would be spazzing as nearly as much. But you couldn't handle your business now, earlier on, 
and now the losing streak is going to get crazy, and you deserve all the heat. No one should feel bad because you should have handled your business earlier on. This is this is tough. The Pistons have put themselves in a tough situation, and while I stay with my point that it's you don't want to go crazy, too crazy for earlier in the season. The NBA season is a long one. What I will say is that you can dig yourself a hole that's too big to dig yourself out of, and decisions and changes can be made based off of a crazy bad start. And I think the Pistons, it's on the board, is 100% on the board, that that crazy bad start may be coming, and decisions may be happening. I don't know what decisions there'll be, but if, I'll tell you this much, and we'll move on to what needs to change, I think. If this losing streak gets like 15, 16 games, there will be something that changes. I, I promise you. I, I, I am willing to bet my entire bank account that if they this losing streak gets to like 15, 16, and the Pistons are like 2-18 and 18 at one point, I promise you something's going to happen. I don't know what, but something will happen. You can't lose this game. You can't lose this game. You can't you lose that Trailblazers game. You can't lose that Bucks game. You can't like these games are winnable games. The Pistons had these games. You're supposed to be better. You're supposed to be better. And while the injuries hurt, you've had situations to win the game. You have to win the game. <sighs> Let me know what you guys think. Comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, I'm going to talk about what I think needs to change moving forward for the Detroit Pistons coming up. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host, my favorite, one of my favorite guys at Locked On, Josh Lloyd, to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. And he's picked out, I'm a real big fan of this player. I was a, kind of a fan of his pre-draft. Didn't talk about him much with the Detroit Pistons because he didn't fit. But I was always kind of intrigued by his game, and that's Keontae George, who looks spectacular in Summer League. And he's getting more and more minutes for the Utah Jazz. He started the last two games for the Utah Jazz. And while he's not shooting the ball particularly well, he only scored seven points in both of the last two games. He is averaging 10 assists over the last two games. He had 11 assists last game and nine assists the game before. So while I don't think he's, you hope that he comes around scoring-wise, if you need someone to get you some more assists, Keontae George is your guy. He's going to continue to get a lot of minutes, and I don't suspect that he's going to continue to shoot 2 of 12 from the floor, 3 of 8 from the floor. He's going to shoot better, and if he can play make and, and, and pass the ball how he's been recently, could be a sneaky pickup for you guys out there. Also, another sneaky one, Kyle Lowry. The Miami Heat are going to be without Tyler Hero, so they're going to need Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry to step it up as their veteran um, for the Heat. He's a fine player. It's, it's, it's fair to question how much he has left in the tank. But without Tyler Hero, the Raptors are going to need him. So I think that's a good sneaky pickup suggested by Josh Lloyd. Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows the championship team. It's about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same with your vehicle. And I've told you guys this many a times. For the last few years, I was a delivery driver. My car would bust on me at the random times. Just... Wheel popped, something would happen. And I'd have such a struggle trying to find the parts and cheaper parts to fix my car up. With eBay Motors, you won't have that problem. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED lights, roof rack, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride for the first time, every time, or your money will be returned to you. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply with eBay Motors. So, I want to thank you guys real quick for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day, for listening to me even when I feel sick and I can tell my voice sounds a little different right now. Um, I'm still feeling the sickness right now. I am... This has not been the best few days for me and my wife. We've been at, really sick. Um, but I'm fine through it to get you guys some episodes out here to talk to these Detroit Pistons. Um, so I thank you guys for making me 
your first listen of every single day for hitting that subscribe button, for giving us five star reviews. I appreciate all of it. Um, I appreciate you guys. What needs to change for the Detroit Pistons moving forward, man? There's a lot. Excuse me. There's a lot that could change. There's a lot that probably should change. We'll start. Let's start here. First thing I gotta say is I've been very understanding, and I have actually I've defended Monty Williams. And before I even go down this, I'm not blaming Monty Williams for this entire losing streak. That's not why I'm happening at all. I've liked a lot of the things Monty Williams has done. But I was defending Monty Williams. I had been very lenient with Monty Williams when it came to the situation around Jane Ivey. And a lot of people, a lot of, I would say, ignorant people, assumed the reason why I was doing so is because of some hidden agenda for killing Hayes, which makes absolutely zero sense. And I don't understand why I would do something like that. I, it was very annoying that people kept assuming that. They were, not everybody, a very loud minority. But it was assumed that that's why I was doing it. When I came on here, I've explained to you guys many times, the reason why I had been defending Monty Williams' usage and the situation around Jay and Ivy, because I know and I'm aware that the Pistons strategy, or at least Monty Williams' plan with Jay and Ivy, was to break him down defensively to build him back up. And when he plays well defensively, he's bringing you what you need offensively, like we all know he will offensively. When he also brings defensive energy and, and it's not just a liability on that end, he will play more. And by do, putting him through this situation, putting him through all of this, it will cause him to have to play better defensively. It will cause him to realize, oh, God, he's actually not going to play me if I don't play defense. I have to be a defender here. And it will cause him to be a better player in the long run. Now, this is just one game. This is just one game. So this very well may still happen. However, in this game against the Atlanta Hawks, Jane Ivey was extremely effective offensively. In 21 minutes, had 11 points, 5 uh, assists, and 5 rebounds. Was very, very effective in this game. He was a plus 1 in this game. The only players that were in pluses in this game was him, Killian Hayes, and Marvin Bagley. And defensively, was by far the best he's looked all year. One of the best defensive performances I had seen from him, especially in the first half. Played extremely well defensively, was making plays, was engaged. And then in the second half, I thought he had one of his better defensive possessions of the year where I saw him uh, navigate and correctly switch on a Spain pick and roll, which can definitely be tricky and catch guards off guard sometimes. And he did that tremendously. And despite that, he only played 21 minutes. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that Jaden Ivey needs to be playing 40 minutes. I understand that there's a lot of guards in this team that need minutes, that they're trying to get minutes to. Alec Burks, Ivy, Sasser, Killian, Cade. It's only going to get worse once uh, Monte gets back. However, I'll simply say this. You're, you're, if, you're, if your whole point is that, hey, if you play defense, if you improve on the defensive end, I will reward you. Once Ivy actually is having a game like he had tonight defensively, along with how much he was helping them offensively, he should be 100% playing more. Ivy should have been the, uh, outside of Cade, Ivy should have played a lot more within this game. He should have played a lot more. Now, I will say that someone did point out to me that he played exactly 20 minutes. So it could be that he's on a minutes restriction, that he could only play 20 minutes within this game. That very well is on the board. I won't completely rule it out. It's a possibility. But we're gonna, if it, that was not why, if, if that was not why, Ivy should have played a lot more within this game. He should play a lot more. And I don't think you have to cut Burke's minutes back. If you want to try to find eight minutes for Marcus Sasser, you can still do that. Killian Hayes only played 23 minutes. You can do that. Cade should not be at 30, 38 minutes. He's gassing out. He didn't play a good game tonight at all. He passed the ball fine in the first half, second half, turned the ball over a lot, wasn't passing yearly as well, and couldn't score in this game. You, uh, you could have easily taken away six to seven minutes from Cade and gave him to Ivy. And now Ivy would be around 28, 29 minutes. Cade would have been around 32 minutes. And uh, no one would be complaining. And that probably would have made more sense. For example, like Cade started off the fourth quarter in the game. No reason for that to be the case. Start Ivy in the fourth quarter. Let Cade get longer rest. And, and balance out the minutes those ways. 
Now you got Killian at 23, Burks at 23. You'll have uh, Ivy around 28 and 29. And Cade, instead of having all these minutes played and carrying all this load along with it and being at 38 minutes, now he'll be hovering around 31, 32 minutes. Like, that, that's fine. That would have been fine within this game. So, again, if he's on a minutes restriction, all that goes out the window. But the first thing I'd say is Jane Ivey needs to play more, especially when he does what was being asked of him, which is play defense. That's the first thing. Second thing, a change to the starting lineup needs to be made. And I want to make this clear. This is not because Killian Hayes has played bad. Killian Hayes has been good. I, I, I've, he's been fine. He's been good. But this starting lap needs spacing badly. They just do. Cade needs to be better, but they need spacing. He needs spacing. I wanted to give it longer sample size. I wasn't going to say this after three games, four games, five games, six games. I wanted to be fair to the coaching staff. wanted to be fair to the players. And, and to be fair, they've been without Jalen Durant, which I'm sure hurts a lot. But after 12 games... I think that's a decent, not a great sample size, but a decent enough sample size to come come away and say that while Killian Hayes has played well, you probably should start Ivy or Burks at the two. And you can still, if you still want to play Killian Hayes 23 more or plus minutes, if you want close with Killian Hayes, you can do all of that just as your backup point guard. In the games that he's playing really well, if you want to close with him, you can. You want to give him more minutes when he's playing really well, try to play three guard lambs, you can. But Killian's played well to be your backup point guard. That's what he should be. He should be the Pistons' backup point guard. And again, I want to make it clear: I am not criticizing Killian Hayes. I thought I honestly think that he's been really good for the Pistons the last few games, for the last eight games or so. He's been playing really well. He should be the Pistons' backup point guard. He should not be the starting guy next to Cade. Cade needs someone who can score and or or can really space the floor and attract gravity from defenses. Because even if Killian Hayes hits two threes or three threes, defenses aren't going to be closing out on him. They're still going to be playing hard at the nail. So they need somebody they respect, someone like Burks or Ivy. They need them out there. I would change the starting lineup moving forward. Um, I think that just has to happen at this point. And again, it's not because Killian Hayes has not been playing well. It's just because Cade needs that. That's what Cade needs. That's the second thing. And the third thing that needs to change. I will say this right now. I'm not saying it has to happen immediately. But what has to change if this thing gets to 14, 15 games, a trade needs to happen. I'm not telling you guys what trade needs to happen, what type of trade needs to happen, but if this gets to like a 15, 16 game losing streak, something needs to change. A trade needs to happen. Whether it's moving off your veterans and really buying completely into a tank that's coming, into a bad year that's coming, because at 2-18, and 18, at 2-17, and 17, I, look, I know I just pointed out when I pointed out last podcast that 5-23 and 23 Pistons team that came back, I, I did not actually think that the Pistons would then lose like 20 straight games. Like, I didn't think that was actually on the board. I thought they would win this game. I thought they played better moving forward. And, heck, maybe they do. Maybe all of a sudden they flip the switch. They can beat the Raptors. They can beat the Cavs. They beat uh, one of the Pacers or the Wizards. Like, maybe that happens. Maybe a switch gets flipped and they start winning games. But if this thing gets, if this thing for real does get the 16 losing streak, somewhere around there, uh, there needs to be a change. A trade needs to happen of some sort, whether it's going and getting a guy to help you win more games this year or moving off your veterans to to completely just buy into the losing that's going to happen this year. Like, a side needs to be picked at that point because it's something it's something's not going right. So that's why I think needs to happen. Those three things. Um, the last one, obviously, is only if it gets really bad. But the first two things, I think that's the immediate difference that has to happen. Oh, and also, obviously, team needs some of their guys back. They need to get guys back healthy, um, and hopefully that helps them. But let me know what you guys think. Comment section down below or over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. When we come back, I want to talk about the one positive from this game, and the one positive over the last few games, which is Asar Thompson. He has arrived for the Detroit Pistons. We'll talk about that when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Ibotta. How does free Thanksgiving sound? This year, Ibotta is here to give you cash back and help make sure your Thanksgiving table is complete because who wants turkey without the gravy and turkey is great but we all know that the best part of thanksgiving dinner is the sides and with ibotta you can make sure you get the whole family's favorite side dishes 
and the turkey, all while getting your cash back. Starting November 1st for the fourth year in a row, Ibotta is giving 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving feast. Just add the offers in the app to redeem for everything you need to make your Thanksgiving feast complete. All you have to do is shop at your favorite retailers and upload your receipt. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. So you make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. You can also earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too. When you start with Ibotta, that includes Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Download the Ibotta app now and use code LOCK to get 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving dinner starting November 1st. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use code LOCK. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKED with Ibotta. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Now, the only positive that's been coming over the Pistons over the last few games has been the play of Asar Thompson. Asar has been pretty good, and this game against the Atlanta Hawks was probably in the conversation for his best game of the year. This game against the Atlanta Hawks, Asar Thompson had 21 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks, on 9 of 12 from the field, 0 of 1 from deep, and left 3 points on the board at the free throw line. Asar Thompson, I think, is showing Pistons fans that he is not going to be just a defensive stopper for this team in the future. In 3 to 4 years from now, I, I, who knows what the ceiling is for this dude. He is an absolute cornerstone for the Detroit Pistons. An absolute cornerstone. This dude can pass. He is one of the best defenders in the NBA already. His feel is off the charts. His athleticism is second to none. It, it, he's one of the best athletes right along his brother, Amen. Best athletes in the entire NBA. He's a great passer. And what you're seeing on display the last few games with the Detroit Pistons is he's starting to figure out how to maneuver and pick his spots without having a jump shot. Over the last eight games, he's shooting 43% from the field. Not perfect, not great, but it's much higher than what he was at the beginning of the year. And it's because he's starting to figure, you can see him in lifetime realizing how I can pick my spots how I can get to my spots, how I can impact the game right now without having a reliable three-point shot. Now, I like the fact that he continues to shoot threes, and I do think, pre-draft, I said I, I believed in his long-term progression as a, as a three-point shooter. It's not there right now. He's not shooting the ball well at all from three. But I do think eventually, I still believe in his long-term um, development from outside. But in the meantime, if that were to never come, but in the meantime, with it not being here, he is figuring out that, hey, I can still put up points. I can fill this box score. I can score 15 plus a game by being me and picking my spots, by scoring in transition, by backdoor cuts, by offensive rebounds, by driving the basketball, by getting to the free throw line. He's doing all those things. And this is without having a jump shot. This is without having a jump shot. The dude's averaging 10 plus rebounds in the year. This box score I just read to you, 21 points, eight rebounds, five assists, three steals, two blocks. That sounds like a souped up Andre Karolinko. That's a throwback for all you guys. You guys may not know who Andre Karolinko is. He was a dog. He was a dog back back in the day for the Utah Jazz. A guy who would be absolutely perfect in today's NBA. If he was in today's NBA, the dude would have multiple All-Stars. But that, that stat line is like a souped-up Andre Karolinko. Asar has been fantastic. I think he's clearly showing that he was absolutely the right pick and a home run of a pick for the Detroit Pistons. And he's going to be, I think he's showing that he's not just going to be a piece of the puzzle. He, he is a cornerstone. He's proven that he's going to be a cornerstone for this franchise moving forward. And I would not, me personally, I would suggest do not put a ceiling on this dude. Don't put one on him. He could be an absolute monster out there. Who knows where he'll end up, what the realistic ceiling is, but I know that you shouldn't guess it. None of us just shouldn't even try to guess it. Because there's a good chance that he will just blow by it. So, Asar has been fantastic as a rookie. And I, I'm so excited that the Pistons drafted him. And 
I, I I can't help myself but to say that I did draft him in the Locked On NBA mock draft, and I got made fun of for drafting him number five. And now, you know, you know, I, I think I'm looking pretty good right now. But Asar has been great, man. I love seeing it. He's been the one positive from the Detroit Pistons lately. So let me know what you guys think about the podcast today. Uh, what you guys' thoughts on the Pistons are at this point, and Asar Thompson in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. That's all we got for you guys today. Hit that subscribe on the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review, whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there, and peace out.